if they call it a training event, I didn't learn anything. It was basically a brainwashing day, if I'm being completely honest. As a family, we probably invested nearer 1,500 pounds. ask you too do you feel like you stayed in Arbonne longer than you wanted to and like did you keep doing the 30 days to healthy living longer than you wanted to I know you never really wanted to do it in the first place but just what was your experience <laughs> with trying to leave you know yeah well I guess yes I did the 30 days to healthy living longer than I wanted to because I did it for 30 days and I didn't want to do it for okay. days. but um, yeah. yeah I mean I so I know you said 30 days and then just Arbonne in general. So first of all, with the 30 days, yeah, I struggled because because of my history, I, I mean, everyone finds it difficult to diet because dieting does not work. And it's like the human brain and the human body isn't supposed to be good at dieting. But particularly me with my history, I'm very bad at dieting because my body is hyper aware of you're restricting, you shouldn't be doing that, and it goes into, you know, survival mode or whatever. Um, anyway, with Arbon, so yeah, I was only in it for four months, and I went to, there was one moment in particular that, that when I really started to get cold feet, and I went to this training event, and that was in my third month, it was called Leadership Academy, and it was kind of just, it, they call it a training event. I didn't learn anything. It was a motivational day. To It was basically a brainwashing day, if I'm being completely honest. And I could see how cult-like it was, and I wasn't brainwashed at this point. Um, and I could see it for what it was, and I was like, what? what is going on? And I was like, I don't feel right about this. And I came away from that day feeling incredibly drained and feeling like do I even want to do this anymore but I tried to keep going with it for about another month but then I was like no I'm still not making any money I'm anxious and I don't have anxiety normally this has given me anxiety I'm feeling depressed because I feel like I'm pushing my friends away and it's just I'm miserable doing it so I probably ended up staying in it for another month I I mean Compared to what a lot of people do, that's not very long that I stayed in. So I do know, you know, some people um, will feel like they can't walk away from it because they've invested so much time and money into it already. Yeah, that's actually um, really common in people who are in cults, like actual cults. I, mm. I personally think that commercial cults are actual cults, but I know that a lot of people, um, you know, nitpick and find like the differences between them. But, um, yeah, people will stay in longer because they feel like since they've invested time and money mm. that they have to because eventually it'll pay off. They're like, oh, I can't quit now because I haven't seen the payoff yet, but I've already invested so much. And I feel like I see that a lot with people who are in MLMs and you're definitely on the lucky side to have gotten out relatively soon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of people waste years <laughs> of their lives yeah and it's so it's so interesting to me how even when people get to the top they're still not happy just for reference how long were you in Arbonne for four months about four months total okay yeah yeah that's a that's a it's a good enough time for you to have either gone I feel like you could have gone either way at that point like you could have been like I've invested four months of my time I need to stay in or I've invested four months of my time, I need to get out, and I'm really glad that you chose um, <laughs> the second option. Yeah, so am I. But to be honest, it was more the money than the time, because I, I had invested a lot of money into this. How much money did you invest, if you're okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I spent about a thousand pounds. But I made about 200, with just under 200 pounds. So in total, I lost just over 800 pounds. But also my mum bought products from me every month and my grandma bought products from me two or three months. So as a family, we probably invested nearer 1,500 pounds. Wow. 
I'm also curious, who mainly bought from you? Was it usually just family? And did you reach out to friends? How did they respond? <laughs> yeah, so the people who bought products from me were my mum, one of her friends, my grandma, her sister-in-law. I think that was it. <laughs> so people I know. No one that I didn't know bought any products from me and I did go to some people okay here's a story this is the this is the friend that I got really upset because I thought I pushed her away so she put a, a post on her Instagram story saying can anyone recommend any products for oily skin like to draw out oils so I went to this Arbonne group chat that I was in and I said can anyone recommend a product for this because my friend is asking for one and they told me to go and recommend a mask so I went and recommended it and she'd been <laughs> she'd been replying to everyone else you know how when uh, you can put their reply on your story on Instagram she did that with everyone else yeah. but not, not with mine <laughs> Because mine was Arbonne and she was like, oh my god, in hindsight, that's so cringe. But, I mean, I genuinely thought, I, I mean, I saw that as an opportunity, obviously. I thought, oh, so someone's asking for a recommendation, I'll give a recommendation. But I didn't realise at the time that people don't trust MLMs. <laughs> because it's definitely more about making money than it is about selling a good product. And I think a lot of people who know what MLMs are recognise that and... I, like I'm very skeptical of any of the products even the ones that people say are good I also know that the prices are jacked up a ton because they have to go through like so many layers of people yeah. um, So you're obviously you're paying for a lot more than just the product which a lot of people aren't comfortable with no, Which makes and sense. And they claim that the reason it's more expensive is because it's better quality, but that's just a lie It's not. It's yeah, because they need to pay you and your upline and your upline's upline <laughs> they need to go all the way yes. up the pyramid in terms of reaching out to people i am so curious like were you encouraged to hit certain quotas of people every day did you have scripts i'm just so curious what that was like so we were we didn't have like a strict quota but we were encouraged i remember at this training event that i went to that i mentioned earlier they said you need to be messaging 100 people a day and i was like at the time i was like i follow 500 people so i'll be done in less than a week really <laughs> um i mean obviously they then expect you to go on and message people you don't know but I was like, come on, in what world am I going to be able to genuinely connect with and send a message to 100 people every day? You're going to be copying and pasting. So either you tell people not to copy and paste and send a genuine message, or you tell them to message 100 people a day. You can't expect them to do both. Did they ever give you a script? So it sounds yeah. like you said that they discourage it or... Oh, they yeah. do? Okay. Well, they, they <laughs> have a script. But they say, um, you know, put your little bits in here. So that's why sometimes you'll see people share photos of, hey, enter name, I um, saw your profile and I thought you'd be amazing at this. And it's like, you didn't even take the time to put my name in. Um, so they say things like, so this is, oh, sorry, my voice so funny there. <laughs> so this is the script that they gave us, I think. Uh, it's been a while. So um, they said, you start off with, hey, whoever. Um, I have recently started my own health and wellness business and um, you give them a compliment, you say why you thought of them, so a genuine compliment, they have to specify that it's got to be a genuine compliment, and um, they say, um, then say it might not be for you, and then, um, and then they encourage you to say, would you be open to this? Because they know that people want to be considered open-minded. They don't want to be considered a closed-minded person. So they think that if you say, are you open-minded, you're more likely to get someone coming back and saying, yes, I'm open-minded. It's interesting to see the overlap between just all MLMs. At, at their core, they're all the same. Because yeah. um, I... I talk on my channel a lot about how I've had, for some reason, a lot of experience with people trying to recruit me for Amway specifically, mm. and that was what they would always say. They would say, are you open-minded? And before I knew 
anything about what was happening my answer was obviously yes and I feel like giving them that option to say yes or no kind of makes them feel like it's their choice or that they're somehow in power in that situation Mm. Um, especially giving that little tidbit about it might not be for you and then they can come back and say oh no like I am open and it is for me and it kind of just opens up this door to even see okay is this person vulnerable enough that they will (laughs) you know respond to this in a way that we might be able to get something out of them so they say to say it might not be for you and at this point i wasn't very i wasn't brainwashed into it so when i got a no thanks i'm not interested i was like okay and i left it at that but i was encouraged no go back and ask them why not and it's very interesting that i find it interesting that at that point i wasn't brainwashed into it so i saw i'm not interested and i took that i took their answer for what it was you respected their boundaries when they said no exactly yeah yeah like a normal human being would respect (laughs) yeah (laughs) i guess the last thing that i really want to ask is how did you end up leaving and what was the experience of leaving like for you because obviously you you went to that um like cult ceremony <laughs> or whatever you- yeah. <laughs> and you saw no, that's a good word yeah that's a good description and uh and then you stayed for a whole month after that what was that month like for you what was the breaking point and what did it feel like when you finally decided to leave it was a huge relief when i decided to leave i honestly felt like a weight had been lifted off me i the breaking point for me there were a couple of things. First of all, I felt like I'd pushed my best friend away. And I remember being, I called my upline up in tears. I'd already actually said to her that I was taking a step back from Arbon because she wanted me to do the 30 days to healthy living for a second time. And I was gonna do it. And then I panicked at the last minute and I said, no, I can't do this. I'm, I'm struggling at the moment. And um, so I took a step back. She took over being my downlines upline. And then I called her up in tears and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I've pushed my best friend away from this. And she basically gaslighted me by saying, no, you're you're overthinking it. Like it's not Arbon. Like or or no, she you haven't pushed her away. It's like how do you know? Mm-hmm. You're not me. You don't experience our relationship together. I'm telling you, something is different between us and it's been different since me being an Arbon. So then, because I was so upset about it, I was like, I need to see how much money, I knew I hadn't made any money at this point, but I was like, I need to see how much money I've lost because I wasn't keeping track of it. And I went and worked out and it was over 800 pounds in four months. And I was like, what the? So, um, obviously, one of the catalysts for you was realizing that you were losing a really important relationship in your life. Do you feel like there was any other, like, lasting effects to this? Like, do you feel like even once you left, was there, were you still affected negatively or in any way by your experience with Arbonne? And how did it feel after you left? Like, you said you felt relieved, but was there still, um, was there still any lingering, you know, effects from being in it for four months which is a significant amount of time i felt a lot of shame surrounding it i quit in well i don't know was it september of 2019 and i didn't share my story until january of 2020 it took me that long to come to terms with what had happened and be comfortable enough to actually tell people what happened so i had a lot of shame but honestly Maybe it was because I wasn't in it for long enough. I don't know how people, it might affect people differently if they've been in it for years. But no, for me, it was it was only a positive quitting. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm glad that now it's given me this sort of um, drive and in, uh, motivation to make YouTube videos. But that doesn't mean that you guys should go and do it. I, I made the mistake for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't go join an MLM just to get content. <laughs> yeah, trust me, you can make anti-MLM content without joining an MLM. <laughs> Starting YouTube for you, I remember watching your first video and at the end you, you even said, 
that you weren't sure if you were going to continue making videos. Um, so I'm curious, when you were sharing your story for that first time on your platform, what was the motivation behind that? Because obviously you didn't know that your channel was going to get bigger at all or get monetized or any of that. It was, it was more, what was that experience like for you and that decision to post that on YouTube? I just needed to tell everyone that I knew why I wasn't doing it anymore and that I was against it because I didn't want them to think that I was oh that girl who was in a pyramid scheme I wanted them to know I was that girl who was in a pyramid scheme and then got out and learnt from my mistakes and I'm now trying to help other people not make the same mistakes um, I <laughs> was so nervous filming that first video it's quite crazy looking back at that first video versus how I am on camera now I mean they're two completely different people <laughs> I'm so glad that you are making videos because <laughs> I think you've probably made a difference in a lot of people's lives. Like you so. have you been reached out to by people who have said that, you know, you've changed their opinion or ha has that been pretty positive? Yeah, I am blown away at the the kind messages I get from people. And it's like I I just make this content because I think it's fun and it's interesting and it's educational and the fact that if if I could even have helped one person then I feel like it was worth it and I, I, I'm trying, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging but honestly I'm just so touched that I've been able to help so many people. Yeah and I love that your motivation behind starting the channel was for education and just sharing your own story mm. because even though it was a hard experience for you and obviously like you said you you carried some shame from it um, so it's not like it's an easy thing to speak up on but you were still open about it and I think openness is definitely the key to change mm -hmm. so happy that you did that and I'm sure that everyone else who watches your videos are very happy about it too <laughs> all right that concludes this anti-MLM video with Charlotte Dickerson thank you so much Charlotte for being a part of this video for letting me interview you and for being so open and honest about your experience I really appreciate it and I know that everyone watching this video does too please make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. It really helps keep me motivated and I just like knowing that you guys enjoy my content and please leave a comment down below if you have any feedback or any comments on anything Charlotte had to say. I will see you guys so soon for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!